Welcome to the Exam Study Expert Podcast, helping you ace your exams at school and university through the psychology of high performance and the science of studying smarter, not harder. It's my pleasure to introduce your host, the Cambridge-trained memory psychologist and exam success coach, William Wadsworth! Hello and welcome to the Exam Study Experts podcast. Our minds can do truly remarkable things, but given they evolved to help us stay alive by finding enough food to eat and avoid being eaten by lions, there are some remarkably interesting and at times remarkably frustrating things that minds do, born out of the fact that they simply weren't evolved to help us thrive in the modern digital knowledge age. In many ways, it's remarkable that they perform so well given the totally different circumstances under which the human brain evolved. So today I want to offer an interesting little selection of tricks that our minds can play on us, a little dose of psychology-inspired real talk about how our perceptions can get skewed, especially when obviously it comes to our mindset for studying. I've got four of these little uh, tricks in total. I want you to listen out for the ones that resonate with you most, uh, that make you sit up and say, oh my gosh, that's me, I do that. Uh, Because the name of the game today is to recognise what's going on, call yourself out on it, maybe literally do that out loud, say this is what's going on, I spot this, I recognise it, verbalise what's happening, and so get smart and rise above it. It should be fun. Let's dive in. The first I've got for you today is the fresh start effect. You may have heard of this. It's popularised by contemporary behavioural economist uh, slash psychologist Katie Milkman. Uh, The fresh start effect refers to our tendency to place undue emphasis on new beginnings, new beginnings per the calendar or the clock. New Year's resolutions are a classic example. A new year, a new beginning, new habits, new life. Uh, But how many other times have you put off starting something to uh, get to a clean break per our arbitrary measurement of time? Let's say you intend to start an exercise programme, but, you know, today's Thursday, the week's almost gone. Well, I better leave it till Monday now. Or even like minute to minute on the clock through the day. So you know you'd start, you'd intended to start getting your essay underway at four thirty, uh, but something happened, and now it's four forty two, and you still need to make tea and get some water. So you won't even manage to start at four forty five. Oh, well, I mean, there's no point even starting at four forty eight. Might as well have a slightly longer break and start at five o'clock. No, we've all been there. It happens to us all. But remember, the clock and the calendar are just completely arbitrary human inventions. Now is the perfect time, whether it's January or the middle of May, whether it's 4.48, 5 o'clock or 17 minutes past three. Now is the perfect time. There's never a better time to start planting a tree than right now. Let's get going. Number two is what I call windfall time. There's a classic bit of decision-making psychology that says that people are more likely to spend windfall money a little bit more frivolously. So windfall money is something that you weren't expecting. So for example, if you found a $10 bill on the street, you're more likely to blow it on something that you don't really need or want versus any other $10 amount that's sitting in your bank account that you earned in a more standard way. I've observed the same effect with windfall time rather than money, at least in my own life. And I'd be interested to hear if any of you have noticed this too. So if I gain an unexpected chunk of time, a chunk of time I wasn't expecting to have for myself, I'm less likely to use it well uh, versus any other regular chunk of time. So let's take an example. Let's say uh, maybe either a social engagement or or a lecture was called off uh, and I've freed up an afternoon at the last minute. I've got an unexpected afternoon at the last minute that I wasn't expecting to have. I've got a pile of stuff to get on with as per usual, but somehow because I wasn't expecting to have that afternoon and the hours that it contains, I'm I'm much less likely to use those hours well. 
And when I say use them well, I don't just mean in terms of productivity and, and getting useful work done. I, I also wouldn't mind if I even took the time off and enjoyed myself properly with some quality leisure time. But I might not even do that either. I just sort of get stuck somewhere slightly in the middle doing a bit of work, but not really being at my most efficient uh, and certainly not having and, you know, enjoying quality leisure time either. So I think one of the issues here is that you're cut loose from your normal habits and routines and even from the prior intentions that you might normally have going into an afternoon. So if you think about it, you probably often start to build up an idea of how you want to use a given afternoon in the days leading up to that afternoon. So that when that afternoon comes, you've kind of created an intention, even if it's not like a conscious plan of formal time blocking or anything like you've, you've at least got some ideas of, of, of what you want to get out of that time. When it's an unexpected last minute windfall of an afternoon, you don't have those prior intentions. So we need to create them on the spot to order. I guess the lesson here is to firstly recognise the windfall time, as I said at the start, call yourself out on what's going on. I've got some windfall time here. Note to self, caution, danger alert. Uh, don't trip on the banana skin of not using this time well and then regretting not not, not using that afternoon well. Um, so having called yourself out, uh, the second thing you might want to do is decide on the ratio of how you use that time. So for example, maybe you go 50-50 uh, and divide up the bonus unexpected time between 50% of the time, you'll do some work and get a bit caught up. 50% of the time, uh, you'll have a bit of extra leisure time. Or maybe if you're terribly behind on work, but reasonably well rested, you might go 100% work time. Maybe if you've been working super hard recently and could use a little rest and recovery time, you just say, okay, 100% leisure time. Then once you've decided how you're going to carve up the extra time between rest and leisure, Write up a quick and simple plan setting out your intentions for how you will use your newfound time well. And I don't just mean how you'll use it well on the work, I mean on the leisure too. So if you've decided you will have some of that time or all of that time for, for leisure time, time off, decide what you'll do. So you're going to go out for a walk, watch a film, play music, do, have a workout, whatever. Have a plan for that stuff too, so you can get the most out of your unexpected bonus afternoon or how, whatever the time was that's been freed up. Use your windfall time well. The third thing I wanted to talk about is revenge procrastination. So this normally describes the decision to sacrifice sleep for leisure time, and that's often driven by a daily schedule that lacks in free time. So you get to the end of the day, you haven't had any time to yourself, uh, and you really need to get some sleep, but you choose to stay up later and um, you know have some kind of late night leisure time uh, because you're so starved of, of free time to yourself uh, the rest of the day. I also know some students use the same term uh, to describe getting work done late at night because you fell behind earlier in the day. So you sort of progress, you know, uh, to catch up later, late at night. And um, either way, I, I understand the temptation to do this. I really do. But <clears throat> robbing yourself of sleep isn't really freeing up extra time in the long run. It's it's rather, it's like taking a loan from a backstreet loan shark at punitive interest rates, uh, to use uh, yes, another sort of financial money analogy, you, in that you're merely borrowing time from future you that will need to be repaid later, likely with interest. I believe in sustainable long-term scheduling uh, that has periods of rest and recovery and leisure time built into your schedule. Uh, and you can see episode 38 for more on the four levels of rest time that I recommend. And that includes taking a little bit of time for yourself each day. Uh, so do tune in to episode 38 if you're feeling really, really starved of free time, uh, such that revenge procrastination is causing a problem for you. And then finally, number four, losses loom larger than gains. Now, this is another classic bit of decision-making psychology. If you want to look it up, it, uh, it, formally it's called prospect theory, as pioneered by Nobel Prize-winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman and his late colleague Amos Tversky. Final, final financial analogy of the day. One of the key findings of prospect theory is that when it comes to our financial situation, losses loom larger than gains. So... An unexpected loss of $100 hurts. It brings dissatisfaction. An unexpected gain of $100 feels good, brings satisfaction. But very consistent experimental findings show that the level of dissatisfaction and satisfaction, it's $100 either way, but it's not the same amount of satisfaction and dissatisfaction in either direction. The dissatisfaction at losing is bigger than the satisfaction in winning, uh, the equivalent dollar amount. 
that losses loom larger than gains. And as such, this is more likely to drive our behaviour and our decision making. Now, again, I suspect we have a tendency to treat time in a similar way to money. Again, at least from what I've observed. That is, lost time hits hard. Coaching clients often talk to me of the frustration of time they've 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 lost, and they so often use this language. You know, I've lost this time, uh, whether it was through illness, um, family circumstances, uh, some bit of kind of frustrating life admin that that got in the way and took up a swallowed up a load of time. Whatever it was, it, it can be really hard to shake that feeling of having lost that time, of of now feeling behind. You know, of needing to kind of claw it back somehow. <laughs> As we've said before, you know, we only have a limited capacity to do work each day. We only have so much capacity and, and we need to build in time for rest and, 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 and recharging each day. Otherwise, you know, we can't sustain our energy and intensity over the long term. So when we have these feelings of feeling you know, behind and having lost time, we need to keep an eye on the big picture. It, don't expect that your study routine will go perfectly to plan every single day, every single week. You will get sick. You will have chores to attend to. Things will happen that need your attention in your life, in your family. It will happen. Understand this in advance and accept the ups and downs of your plan. Don't ber- berate yourself about some arbitrary loss of time. Instead, glass half full, glass half empty. Give thanks for all the time you do still have. Treat yourself with compassion and kindness. Then go right ahead and make the most of the time that remains. To quote Tolkien, all that we have to decide is what to, to do with the time that is given to us. I hope you've enjoyed these four little mindset tricks uh, and, and I hope at least one of them resonated with you and you thought, oh yes, yes, I've, I've been there. Uh, and I hope you might have some ideas at least to kind of recognise what's happening in the moment uh, and then hopefully to, to be able to, to, to work around it and, and mitigate that impact. For a little bit of context, the idea for this episode actually came when I was brainstorming what I wanted to talk about in an upcoming course I have recently created uh, called The Scholar's Way, which if you'll give me just a few extra moments, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about before I wrap up for the day. The Scholar's Way is a 30-day program carefully crafted to help you discover things about your scholar's mindset that you might never have known before and help you build a powerful, flexible and calm mental outlook that is the bedrock of success in your studies. Give me 30 days and I will help you find fun, freedom and flow in your studies once more. Each day throughout next month, November, I'll be releasing a bite-sized video training, 5-10 minutes, which introduces one of 30 mindset concepts, one each day for the whole of November, 30 days, 30 mindset concepts that I've consistently found to be the most impactful ideas, reframes, mental exercises to help my coaching clients with the mindset stuff that so often comes up alongside the practical stuff we work on uh, in terms of how to memorise effectively or design your routine, etc. Each day, uh, Each day's lesson will close on a prompt for reflection. And I recommend taking a couple of minutes to think about the question or do the mini exercise of the day. They will range from introspection, thinking perhaps about when you have your best ideas and insights, so you can find more of them, or considering the conditions that set you up for flow state, so you can lean into that, uh, through to some slightly more practical suggestions to help you, for example, structure your day for more productivity and enjoyment. You can either answer the questions on your own privately, journal about them, write them in your note, write your thoughts in your notebook, or or if you'd like, uh, I invite you to hop into the course forum and share your thoughts on the question or exercise of the day with your fellow course mates, seeking feedback from me or others if you'd like, or just owning your insights and decisions out loud with all the power that brings. The exam study expert community makes up some of the, honestly, the nicest humans you could hope to meet. Um, And around this course, I hope to see sort of an explosion of kindness and support and encouragement and inspiration. You don't have to do the lessons every single day or anything like that. If you want to have weekends off or miss some days, you can catch up at your own pace. The lessons will stay up once they're live. I invite you for a moment to imagine what it'd be like to reach the end of November, having made some massive strides once and for all in whatever little mindset issues or perhaps big mindset issues you most need to tackle, whether it's doubting yourself, concerns with motivation or staying consistent, procrastination or focus, getting your work-life balance right and the associated guilt about that, uh, maybe anxiety, stress levels, overwhelm, or just simply not enjoying your studies as much as you'd like. 
We all have stuff going on, no matter how well we're performing on paper. This is the course to help you dig down, get into the foundations for success in your studies and help you find the fun, freedom and flow in your work once more. It should be a pretty special experience and I do hope you'll be able to join us for it. There are a few options for how to join us, which I'll just briefly outline before I go today. The course itself is priced at $145, $145 for the live round in November where the lessons come out each day, uh, plus lifetime on-demand access to the recordings as soon as they're up. So you can simply buy standalone access to the course for $145, nice and simple. But quite a few of you listening won't need to do that because you will already have access to the course and that might apply to more of you than might perhaps expect uh, that applies to. So as with all of my courses and programmes, as you'd probably expect. It's included if you are a Study Smarter Network member. Simply sit back and look out for details coming your way. What you might not expect is that you'll also get access to The Scholar's Way if you've ever done a coaching programme with me recently or in the past. Anytime. If you've been a coaching client, The Scholar's Way is coming your way as my gift to you. No charge. There are hundreds of past and present uh, coaching clients of of ours and some of you I've known over years and and collectively you're some of the nicest warmest and kindest humans I've I've had the honor of crossing paths with and it would mean so much to bring you all together to share this experience together so if you've been a past coaching client sit tight and look out for an email from me soon about how you can get access to the scholars way and I hope you'll come join us for that journey I'll also be extending that offer to anyone who becomes a coaching client this October. So if you've been considering doing some coaching together to help you prepare for upcoming exams, this would be a really nice opportunity to get some in-depth one-on-one sessions with me to discuss your specific circumstances, help you make progress, complemented by the full Scholars Way programme for a total immersion experience, uh, which I think could be really powerful. The final option is the most budget-friendly one. Uh, You can finally access The Scholar's Way as part of the new Study Smarter Network pay monthly membership option. I I quietly introduced the monthly, uh, previously just annually, uh, I quietly introduced the monthly option as as a sort of temporary experiment a couple of weeks back. I don't honestly know whether I'll keep that option open uh, for new members for too long um, because I really want to build slightly longer term relationships with people in the Study Smarter Network. Um, But for now, the monthly option is open to new members. Uh, It's only $30 a month. And as an added bonus, if you join any time from now, uh, so October, any time in October, I'll even extend your first billing period out to the end of November so that you can enjoy the full Scholar's Way live experience, live round uh, as part of your first $30 instalment. So in effect, if you were to sign up on the day this podcast airs, you'd pay $30 today and then you wouldn't have anything to pay until uh, the start of December. So effectively getting your first seven weeks in the Study Smarter Network for the price of four. Um, If you want to leave us at the end of that first instalment, you can. There's there's no tie-in or anything, Uh, though, of course, I hope many of you will stay and take advantage of all that the Study Smarter Network has to offer for a little longer. I really hope the range of options isn't too confusing or overwhelming. Uh, Just to really briefly recap, if you're a coaching client or sign up to be one this October, you'll get the Scholar's Way included as my gift to you. Or you can buy lifetime access to the Scholar's Way for $145. Or finally, get access as part of a Study Smarter Network subscription with options currently starting from just $30 a month. The main reason I've ended up with a a few different options and routes in is that I really just want to bring as many of you together, the wonderful exam study expert community, as many of you together as possible to share the Scholar's Way journey together. I think it will be quite a special experience that will stay with us all for a long time. Uh, I've set out those options for you at examstudyexpert.com forward slash TSW uh, so that you can choose what's right for you and enrol as appropriate. That's TSW as in the acronym for The Scholar's Way. The Scholar's Way will be a personal journey. Everyone will take slightly different things from it. And I'm really excited to see what it can do for you and your academic life. Head to examstudyexpert.com forward slash TSW and join the transformation today. Thanks so much for listening today and wishing you every success in your studies.